Welcome everyone. For today's prep, we're gonna start to look at some more derivative rules. So, so far we've been developing the limit definition of derivative and, we, and we've seen that that's eh, kind of a, a more complicated way to actually calculate a derivative. There's a lot of work there. Um, but it turns out that there's derivative rules that kind of simplify the process for us and all of the derivative rules can be proved going back to that limit definition of derivative. So we're gonna look at a few of those rules today and try a couple examples. So the first rule we're gonna look at tells us how to calculate the derivative when we have a constant multiple. We've also already looked at the power rule. So that's we'll keep that one tucked aside. We're gonna be using that as well. So the power rule helps us differentiate power functions like this. Um, but the new one here is this constant multiple rule. So what this rule says is if we have a constant k times some variable stuff, so times a function f of x, and we want to differentiate that whole thing, well, what we can do instead is we can first focus on differentiating the variable part and then multiply that result by k. So another way to think of this is it's almost like we're moving the constant, so this is a constant, It's almost like we're taking the constant and we're moving it out in front of the differentiation. All right, so let's see how this works. Let's try an example. So let's look at example one. We're gonna we're gonna do the first two of these. So let's start with the uh, the very first one here. We want to do the derivative. So that's what this d dx means. It means do the derivative of what's inside here with respect to x. So our function here is two times x raised to the power five. Let me zoom in here, there we go. <laughs> All right, so what do we have? Well, we have a constant two times this power function x raised to the power five. So we have a constant multiple. We have a constant times some variable stuff. So what the constant rule, uh, or the constant multiple rule says is we can first focus on differentiating that variable part. So let's just do that just with regular power rule here. So like we learned. So we're gonna take the five, bring it down, put it in front of the X. We're gonna keep X the same, and then we're gonna subtract one from the exponent. So we're gonna go from five down to four. So this is regular power rule here. Okay. And what the constant multiple rule says is that constant multiple two just kind of sticks around in front and just multiplies our result. So that two just kind of sticks there. So what we have is two times the derivative of that, that variable part, the x to the power five. And usually it's a good idea to, if you have constants getting multiplied together, multiply them out. So we end up with 10 X to the four. Now, when you get the hang of this, you'll probably just go right from here to here. So the way you'll kind of think of this is you'll take the five, you'll bring it down, multiply it with the two that's already there to get 10, and then you keep X and then you subtract one in the exponent. All right, so that's constant multiple rule. Let's try one more of those. So let's look at, yeah, let's look at uh, this one. So again, we're doing the derivative and now we have x cubed over four. So we're doing the derivative of all this stuff. Now, it not absolutely necessary, but I think it's helpful. When we have fractions like this, it's helpful to kind of separate, kind of break the fraction apart, get all the constant terms on one side and then all the variable stuff on the other side. So in this case, before we do the derivative, I'm just gonna rewrite this a bit. So I'm gonna rewrite this as one over four times x cubed. And the reason for that is now I can treat this one over four, this one over four is just a constant multiple, 
and I'm multiplying it with this variable term, the x cubed. So before the, 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 the fraction there might, might throw us. So it's helpful to kind of break that fraction apart. And this is something we can always do. So if we have, if we have a fraction a over b, we can always write that fraction as 1 over b times a. So 1 over the denominator times the numerator. So that's all we're doing here. So it's helpful to separate off the constant. Um, all right, so once we get to here, though, constant multiple rule. So the we can first focus on differentiating that x cubed. So what's the derivative of x cubed? Well, we bring down the 3, keep x the same, and then we subtract 1 in the exponent, so we get 3x squared. And that's the derivative of the variable part. And then the constant just kind of sticks around, just stays in front there. And again, usually it's a good idea when we have constants like this being multiplied. Let's actually kind of do the multiplication. So 3 times 1 over 4, we can multiply the 3 into the numerator. And we end up with 3 over 4x squared. And I would just leave it like that. Okay, so that's our constant multiple rule. It allows us to differentiate when we have a, con uh, a constant multiple times a variable term. Now there's one other rule we'll, we'll start to look at, and that is, we'll, we'll do these examples in class. Um, the next rule we'll look at though is called the sum rule. So what this rule do, uh, does for us is it tells us how to differentiate when we have two variable terms and we're adding them together. So what we have here is we have one variable term plus another variable term. And what this rule says is rather than, and we're trying to differentiate this whole thing. And what this rule says is rather than trying to do the whole thing all at once, we can just first differentiate the first variable term. Then we can differentiate the second variable term just on its own. And then the addition sign just kind of stays the same there in the middle. And this also works for subtraction. So this also works for subtraction, which is nice. So technically, if there was a minus sign, no. let's say, uh, if there was a minus sign here, then we would just put a minus sign here. So now it doesn't work for multiplication or division. So that's, that's worth a, I would say that's worth a star, <laughs> just to remember. This does not, there, there is a rule for multiplication. There is a rule for division. We're, we're going to get there eventually, um, but it's not as simple as the sum rule. So, so don't be tempted with multiplication. Or division. Now you might be wondering, well, we just did multiplication. There was one with, there was division. When I say multiplication and division, I mean multiplication and division between two variable terms. So we have one variable term plus another variable term. So if we go back up to the two examples we did, yeah, there is multiplication here, but we were multiplying a constant with a variable. So that's, we're talking about multiplying two variables. So that's not what we have here. It's a constant times a variable. And yeah, we do have a quotient here. So this there is division. But again, it's not two variable terms. It's only one variable term on the top, and then we're dividing it by a constant. So instead, we can break it apart like this. And then it just becomes a constant multiple issue. <clears throat> All right, so let's try. We're just going to do one of the sum rules. So let's look at the very first one here, x cubed plus 5x. And we want to differentiate that whole thing. All right, so what does the sum rule tell us? Well, what we have here is we have one variable term 
plus another variable term. And then we have a plus sign in the middle. <clears throat> so what the sum rule tells us is we can first focus on that very first variable term, get the derivative for that. So what's the derivative of x cubed? Well, we use our power rule. So we're going to bring the 3 down, keep x the same, subtract 1 in the exponent. So that's the derivative of our x cubed. And then we want to do the derivative of 5x. So this is a constant multiple. So the 5 just kind of sticks around. And then we want to figure out what's the derivative of x. And the derivative of just x is 1. <clears throat> and there's our derivative of 5x. And what this rule tells us, what the sum rule tells us, is because there was a plus sign here, because we had addition in between those two variable pieces, we're going to have a plus sign in our derivative, right where it, right where it was. And that's it. That's our, that's our derivative, 3x squared plus 5. Um, now, just to kind of go back to this, I don't know if we've ever used power rule for differentiating x. So I'll just kind of mention this again. So there's a few ways you could think of differentiating this 5x. So one way is you could think of that as mx, so that when we differentiate it, we get just m. So remember, derivative is kind of finding the slope of the curve. And for just this 5x piece, the slope of 5x is just m, or just 5. So you can think of it that way, when it's just an x. But if we have a higher power of x, then that doesn't work. Um, if you want to think of it as power rule, though, so if we have 5x, and we have here a constant multiple 5, well, the constant multiple 5 is going to stick around when we differentiate. And then let's see, let's try power rule on the x. So there's a hidden exponent of 1 there. So I can bring down the 1, and then I keep x the same, and then I subtract 1 in the exponent. So I get 1 minus 1. And that's the same thing as 5 times x raised to the 0. And we interpret things raised to the power 0 as just 1. So this this, uh, this x to the 0, we just kind of interpret that as 1. So we end up with 5 times 1 and then just 5. So you could think of it either way. You could think of this 5x, we're just finding the slope of mx, and the slope is just m, so we can just get 5. Or if you want to think of it like power rule here, you bring down the 1, put it in front. You know, the 5 sticks around in front as well. Keep x the same, and then we subtract 1 in the exponent, and then we end up with x to the 0, and that's just 1. All right, so we're going to practice more of these rules in class, um, but it gives you a good start. So constant multiple rule and the sum rule. We're going to be able to do a lot of derivatives now.